Wisconsin's last round of recall elections came to a close on Tuesday as voters took to the polls to decide the future of two state Senate seats held by Democrats. Democratic Wisconsin state senators Jim Holperpin and Robert Wirch were able to avoid recalls and maintain their positions in the state legislature, which is now comprised of 17 Republicans and 16 Democrats. Democrats were able to pick up two seats the previous week after voters recalled two of the six Republican senators in special elections, though they failed to win the three seats needed to secure a Democratic majority in the state Senate. While some leaders in the Democratic Party are celebrating the two successful recalls as a victory, many other elements of the opposition to Governor Scott Walker and state Republicans were disappointed with the results. They needed three to uh, uh, regain uh, some majority in the um uh, state Senate and have now fallen, of course, one short, so the Republicans still hold the majority. Um, I think that left a lot of people demoralized. Uh, there, was l there were lots of folks who campaigned uh, almost full-time, lots of trade union people, lots of rank-and-filers going on, on phone banks and uh, in door-to-door um, -door in these uh, Republican districts, uh, again, hoping to unseat uh, those the the the, uh, the the standing Republican uh, senators. One thing is quite obvious that there were uphill battles to begin with. Uh, the the recall attempts against the Republicans were made in uh, fairly solid Republican districts. Uh, one against this Senator Olson, this Republican Senator Olson. Uh, there had it's been a, a Republican district for 100 years over a hundred years. The recall elections began as part of an opposition strategy to the controversial policies of Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, including the elimination of collective bargaining rights for most public employees. As much of the movement's energy was actively shifted from mass mobilizations to electoral efforts, many are now asking whether leaders could have called for a more multifaceted strategy to better resist Walker's policies. At the start of the, um, oh, back in, say, March, certainly, um, the, Repub the Democratic leadership was calling for people to basically demobilize. Uh, we heard from the rostrums and the stages here, the last big rallies in Madison, uh, uh, some officials, some trade union officials and some Democratic leadership uh, saying that they no longer wanted people to come out for the big uh, rallies and demonstrations, that they should go home to their home districts and get involved entirely in recall. And many of us uh, uh, watching that process said, well, there's much more to that. There's much more to what's going on uh, than uh, electoral campaigns. That electoral campaigns, by their very nature, can dissipate energy uh, and uh, force p people back into tried and true and sometimes failed, not always victorious, um, campaigns. Uh, it was important for... Uh, to maintain, some of us thought, the mobilizations and that, that such things as direct action, demonstrations, uh, 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 actions at uh, those corporate centers that, that support Walker, uh, possibly job actions or uh, the, the targeting of employers, uh, Republican employers, that kind of thing to keep people mobilized and to keep, the, keep emotion going, that that was as important, if not more so, than, than a simple focus on recall. Many Democrat and Republican Party members and affiliates at the national level have viewed the developments in Wisconsin as a testing ground for broader emerging trends in the United States surrounding issues like workers' rights and privatization. Record amounts of money were poured into the campaign efforts ahead of Wisconsin recall elections, with many corporate financial contributions flowing in from out of state. Certainly there was massive amounts of spending that went on in the campaigns and uh, in, in most of the uh, most of the spending, especially that money, the, a lot of which came from out of state, uh, went overwhelmingly to the Republican uh, ca uh, campaigns to the candidates. Uh, as much as um, twice as twice the amount of money uh, went to the Republican candidates from out of state and in state uh, to uh, defeat the. Um, offensive by the Democrats. Of course, uh, now in this age uh, where corporations are, are viewed as individuals and there's no ceilings really on the amount of money that 
uh, these corporations and think tanks and foundations and various fronts can pump into these campaigns, uh, the, the sky is the limit. With the disappointing results of the recall, activists in Wisconsin and elsewhere are looking at forms of fighting back in addition to and outside of mainstream electoral processes. In, in much the same way that the um, rest of the country, certainly uh, uh, progressives and the labor movement and, and so on, uh, took inspiration from the initial upsurge in Wisconsin and has looked to Wisconsin uh, as a, a, uh, a leader in this fight against uh, an imposed austerity nationally, a neoliberal agenda nationally. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the country was looking toward uh, Wisconsin uh, to see what would happen with these recalls. Um, and, and so I think there was a, a parallel development uh, around the country of uh, people seeing this a, as, a, as a defeat. But we could also see other things in motion, such as the, uh, the ongoing Verizon strike. Lots of people in motion outside of the electoral arena uh, realizing that they have to fight back. You have to fight back where you are uh, and uh, get involved in, in all forms of collective action not, in, and not confine themselves to, uh, again, to just simply or solely the electoral arena. For now, there is little that the opposition in Wisconsin can do to challenge Governor Walker's agenda through electoral channels until later this year when an effort to recall Governor Walker is set to commence. The Wisconsin governor can be recalled after holding office for a year, which he will complete in January 2012. In Ohio, a campaign opposed to public sector union busting bill, SB5, successfully collected more than 1.3 million signatures, which will allow for a vote in November to repeal the bill. This is David Doherty with The Real News Network.